This week on Sportsman TV, it's all about the right tree selection. Come on, go with us. Uh, we're in Atchafalaya Basin today, beautiful day. We're here with a, an infamous guy, some people out there might know, <laughs> they will know him after the day anyway. Uh, we're spinnerbaiting right now, you know, just got started, hadn't been down here in a while, and uh, the water's up this morning, so we just picked some shallow cypress trees, and you know, the way the conditions are, it's gonna be one of those days where, you know, there are no really bad choices, we're just gonna have to select the right bait today to catch them. You know, just have to figure out if they're on the bottom or they're up or uh, water temperatures, you know, good for, you know, for them being everywhere. But we're going to throw at these cypress trees first because you come to the Chafalaya Basin, that's the number one target, cypress tree. Finally got a bite. I don't know why it's... I'm thinking we might have missed that early bite this morning, so we, we're going to be depending on the after... Uh, the afternoon. But I don't know, it has been a little tougher this morning than I, than I expected. I cheated this morning a little while before everybody got here and I caught a couple on that sprinter bait, you know, in another lake. But since that period of time, we haven't had any bites. This water's pretty here, it's greener, it's kind of dirty where we've been fishing at, but nice one. You know, really, we're just looking for an area that's got the fish in it. You know, typically on these lakes, these fish will be bunched up. There's so much of it that looks just alike, but there'll be something that's different that makes the fish get there, whether it's bait or the bottom or, uh, you know, current pulling. You very seldom ever catch them on these lakes just random. You know what I'm saying? Like, typically there's a reason. I fish some pockets, indentations, some shallower stuff. You know, the lake's got quite a bit of water in it. The water is a little higher than I would like. We do have falling water. You know, the tide's going to fall most of the day. So I'm just looking for a place that, you know, those fish are set up feeding. And what I'm looking for is activity, just fish activity in general, not necessarily bass blowing up or it could just be some bluegill or, you know, it's real quiet today. And uh, we got low, there's a, I mean, a big one. That's what we're looking for right there. But, but that's been hard to come by. But that's the reason I keep moving around thinking, you know, that we find an area that's got them. Now that's one thing about the basin, it's just full of that size fish. But so far today, they've eluded us. And the best way to catch one in the basin is on that sprinter bait. I mean, that's the, but we had tried that a good bit and hadn't got bit and, you know, finally moved around and uh, got some bites. Kyle has found a need to plant some of these, so I'm needing to get a new one out, but that's just a 3 8 ounce Hack Attack Select. Number one color right there, blue, white, and chartreuse, called the pot liquor. <laughs> but I'm hoping since he's planted so many of them around in these trees, that one day you'll come back and there'll be Hack Attack Select sprinter baits hanging in, they look like Christmas trees. They won't look like cypress trees anyway. They look like Christmas trees. <laughs> just putting a little, just a little white grub on the back. And again, it's not so much for that they're seeing that grub. That grub just holds that bait up a little higher and gives that fish a little more, uh, you know, a little more meat when he gets a hold of it. You know, a lot of times if I'm burning that spinnerbait and the water's clear, I don't want that. I don't want that trailer on there because I want to be able to get that spinnerbait coming and I want the profile to be smaller. But when the water's dirty like that, I like to put a little grub on the back of it and. Uh, just get us a little more beef. I'll try not to put this one in the trees. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What 
That didn't work out well. <laughs> Sorry about that, Jack. <laughs> oh, there's Got another big one right here. Here, look. <laughs> Dang it, I'm gonna get too close to the boat. Dang it. That's that's the way they're supposed to be wadded up like that. That's crazy, huh? Yeah, you know, w one of the reasons here you want to slow down, if you look at that watercolor, it's real easy to fish over fish when the water's dirty like that. And uh, it's real important to make, you know, different presentations with your bait because when the water's that dirty, you got to hit that fish on the head. You know, if that water's gin clear and the visibility, he can see 10 foot, you don't have to be as thorough with your presentation. But, you know, when you got as much cover as we have and the water's off colored like this, you know, I, a lot of times I've thrown at the same tree 15 or 20 times to get one of them to bite. Or do that, come back and throw at it, and it might be the third time you come by the tree that you get the fish to bite once you locate them. So far today, really what we had been doing was just covering water, trying to find some fish. And, uh, cause I haven't been down here in recent times and neither has Kyle, so we, we experiment. And you know, here just, we, we fished two or three areas and pulled up and I caught one. Then he caught one and I missed another one. So there's definitely, you know, some fish here. And there's a good bit of water flowing through these trees. So it's just a perfect situation. So we're gonna just, you know, rotate around. And uh, you know, a lot of times when you catch one on a bait, that doesn't necessarily make it the right bait. You know, you get around some fish, a lot of times one will show itself. So this could be one of those situations where, you know, we spinner bait and throw a crankbait around in here and then have to come back through with a slower bait, you know, a jig, a worm, a tube or something, and, uh, you know, flip around some of these trees. The whole key in catching fish most of the time is finding them. You know, it seems like when you get around them, they're not near as hard to catch. You know, when, typically when you're not around, you know, not around them or you're not catching them, you're either not doing the right thing or you're just not around them. And, uh, you know, the deal with our part of the country is so much area looks just alike, but there's always something a little different, the bottom, the current, something that makes an area, uh, you know, something that makes an area good. Now, one thing you notice, like the, the spinnerbait that Kyle's throwing and the one I'm throwing, anytime that water's dirty, I like to have that, that kicker blade to be colored. Um, his is chartreuse and mine is orange, but I just like having that little bit, something that looks just a little bit different in the water other than just gold or nickel. And another deal is, in that dirty water, is I like that turtle blade or a Indiana blade or a Colorado blade rather than a willow leaf. Now I have the same spinnerbait tied on with a willow leaf. Willow leaf, you get a lot of flash, but you don't get any vibration. You know, if you throw a spinnerbait with that turtle blade or a Colorado or Indiana, it has a little more thump to it and you can feel that bait coming, those fish will key in on that vibration when it comes through the water. Now what I like about the turtle blade, say over the, those other two that I mentioned, is that it's kind of the best of both worlds. It puts out a lot of flash like a willow leaf, but it also you know, puts out some vibration like the Colorado, so it's kind of the best of both, uh, best of both worlds. But just a 3 8 ounce, that's a Hack Attack Select simple as you can get in fishing cypress trees. I, I don't know that there's a better way to fish than spinnerbait around cypress trees. Finally found another little wad of them. You know, he didn't uh, look at his hook. He just really hit at the bait. He didn't eat it. I, I still can't figure out if that's a timing. You know, if we're just not, they just ain't got after it yet or is it because of the tide. I mean, he wouldn't come off, but he, uh, almost like he was just fighting at that bait. Didn't like for it being around him. Just another one of those solid basin bass. They're pretty, aren't they? You know, basically because these fish are ambush predators, they just, they pull up on a key tree. I don't know if it isn't more about the bottom right now than it is the trees because we are blessed with a million thousand trees, but it's a place where those fish are just getting there and they're sitting and they're waiting for that current to drift whatever they're feeding on by. Now I've yet, now we've not really, we see a little stuff moving around, but we've not 100% keyed in yet on uh, what they're feeding on. It could be crawfish. It doesn't necessarily have to be bait fish, you know, it could be crawfish. And so the deal is I'm catching them right now on that spinner bait. And uh, we're just, we're gonna find these high spots and then we're gonna turn around and go back through them. And probably either I'm gonna throw a crankbait some or flip, fish something on the bottom around it. Cause I feel like we fished over the way those fish were really aggressive that we fished over some that didn't bite. You know, all these trees got, you know, brim and bluegill and goggle eye and everything else around them and crawfish. 
Golly, that's a lion. Well, oh, that's a nice one. I mean, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. That right there is what you come to the basin for. Yes, indeed. That's the same tree that Kyle missed one, caught one. I missed one on a while ago. That's okay. Just let it rest and come back. And I mean, eat it. It's important today that every fish counts. So I'm replacing, these are standard long shank number twos that come off of this. This is a KVD, uh, Strike King 2.5. And uh, I am replacing the hooks that come with, again, they're good. And I catch lots of fish on them, but I'm replacing them with short shank number ones, which I'm going up one complete size in the bite, but this is a short shank hook. So that's what allows me to run that bigger size on this bait. And um, you know, the deal is it's like that spinner bait. That spinner bait's got one big single hook in it and you don't lose a lot of fish on it. So by upsizing the size of your crankbait hooks, when you can get away with it, you know, will help you catch an extra fish. You just you know, and again, these hooks are short shanks, so even though I went to a bigger set, they still don't hang. Now, with that being said, the next size above a number one in these treble hooks is a one alt. And if I was cranking this bait on shell beds or grass or a little more open water where I wouldn't dealing with all this wood like we are with these cypress trees, I actually go to one size even bigger to the one alt. But because I'm fishing around, you know, this heavy, uh, heavy cover and a, a lot of wood, I only upsize the hooks one size. But I am a firm believer in a big hook. Looks like a swamp mullet. Um, I'm a big believer in having big hooks. Like this is a 1.5 that I'm cutting off and going to that bigger plug. And uh, I actually have upgraded to one uh, number twos in it, which was the same size I cut off that bigger bait. Um, I, another thing is, I, I, 1.5 is, you know, probably hard to beat it. It's a fish catcher, but fishing around these trees and that off-colored water, at 2.5 is a little more buoyant. I can actually fish it shallower by holding up on it a little bit. It's heavier. It makes it target fish really easy. It's really accurate casting, you know, when you're pitching around those cypress trees. But um, these fish that live on these cypress trees have a tendency to eat big bait. And what I mean by that, that's not a giant bait, but a pound and a half basin bass living on that tree will eat a goggle eye that's half as big as my hand. So that's still, I mean, a small lure, you know, compared to what these fish eat. And, uh, you know, I still believe that big bait, big fish theory. And I just want something in that dirty water that will draw that fish out. There it is. Very big and too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Maybe Calvin found us another tree. <laughs> now Kyle, was he on the tree or off of it? Or? No, he was off of it, between, but between here and the tree. You know, one thing about when you're fishing these trees like we did today, a lot of the presentation is close. You know, I'm really not, you know, I'm not making long casts. I'm just throwing it right up under those limbs. That tree realistically is going to need, you know, six or seven casts to really fish it right. And one thing I found when the water's dirty like it was today, you typically have to make more presentations to the tree, you know, because those fish don't see as well. So you got to hit them on the head. But you know, I'm fishing close. You keep your trolling motor turned down low. You don't want it making a lot of racket because you are fishing close. And you know, as I get by the tree, see, I'm able to change angles. There's a part of that tree that just got exposed that wouldn't when I first pulled up there. And a lot of times you'll find that, like I'll end up fishing back. So I don't want the boat to be going very fast. I want to be creeping around these trees, almost like if you were sight fishing redfish or something, because you know, a lot of these fish I'm gonna catch, you know, I got three to six foot of line out when they bite, because the only way to get that bait under there is to stay close and pitch it under there. 
Because if you try to make long casts before you get there, a lot of time, and these trees, they got set hooks hanging in them and Spanish moss hanging underneath them, you know. So it's just really good when you get there to make those little short pitches. It's not a lot of work in it. And basically, realistically, once you get it off the tree, you can five or six foot, you can reel it in and put it again because another thing you'll find when the water's dirty like it was the day, they'll be close to the cover. Now, w when you had as much shade as we do when the water's clear in that same group of cypress trees, a lot of times they won't be on the trees, they'll be around them. But when you got a dirty water situation, again, that's typically, that's when that spinnerbait just really comes into play, but you need to be able to throw and put the bait on the target. That's the whole key to it, is hitting the target. Surely you got one more jump in. How did I know that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? He's little, but he wants to be big. Oh, found me a hard spot. Why'd he eat that bait? We're coming up on a, a sure enough a cypress tree point here, so hopefully it will be loaded and a little larger. You know, again, on a lake like this, the, the, the best way to tell where they are is to fish for them. It's to fish what looks good and let them tell you, because like I, uh, so I've still kind of, you know, yeah, we caught some off the points and that definitely seems to be the best, but it's just, you know, we got a lot of shade now on this bank because of the angle of the sun and it just trying to kind of expand what we're doing a little bit. You know, see if those fish won't expand out. You know, that's the cool thing about fishing cypress trees and on all these big lakes. You know, the basin's full of lakes like this. I don't know how many, there are lots of them and all of them have a tendency to hold fish more so in the summertime and the fall because what happens with these lakes in the dead of wintertime and early spring is that cold muddy water flows through all of them. None of them are, are dead, are dead ends. And you know, typically in the you know, pre-spawn and during the spawn, you wanna fish something that's dead end. Uh, but just soon as those fish get through spawn and they migrate back out on these lakes, you know, on these cypress tree lakes and they're just lots of area and a lot of fun fish and you know, not a prettier place to catch a bass than around a cypress tree. That is crazy. <laughs> 20 casts in. But I just, I, I knew there would be another one there because there was no way that, uh, you know, we caught those two good ones off of it, had another bite that there wouldn't be another fish get there. And I don't, honestly, I doubt that's the last one. I feel like there'll be a, uh, you know, be another one get there. That's just a sweet spot, you know, I mean, that's. You know, really the deal today was we, we had some adverse conditions that I didn't expect. Um, I hadn't, you know, I, I'm, honestly I didn't research like I should have. I had forgot about here, you know, a week or so ago we had a big rain, six, seven inches in places. And uh, it dirtied up some of the area that we fished today, so that made it a little difficult. But it still seemed to be the deal was cypress tree points, current. It was all about the current today. Even we fished other cypress tree points that didn't have any current, no bites. And uh, you know, most of those fish came on that hack attack select spinnerbait, uh, but I noticed that a couple of those fish, I actually saw that spinnerbait run right over them before they got it. And I picked up a popping perch, you know, and caught a couple good ones on the frog. But, uh, you know, all in all, it wasn't a bad day, but it wasn't, it wasn't the glory hole day. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, the spinnerbait fishing like we did today, I was using a Quantum Tour KVD 610. I like a shorter rod with a shorter handle because you're roll casting. It's all about target fishing. You know, throw another, I like a big reel. This is a Smoke HD 200. And uh, one thing I do different from a lot of people, you know, fluorocarbon's big now and braid's big now, but for spinnerbait fishing around targets, I stick with mono. That's 20 pound gamma copolymer that I use today. It's soft, it casts good. And one thing happens when you're fishing in those trees like that and you're fishing close, and you're making those little underhand pitch casts, a lot of those fish get you close. And I like a line with stretch and mono has stretch. You know, there are certain situations, you know, when I picked up the frog, of course, that was a braided line deal. But throwing that spinnerbait around targets for me is still about mono. And the main thing about it is it's forgiving. So when you see that fish get you with six foot of line out, because that happens fishing like this, it allow, that stretch in that line allows that fish to engulf that bait. And I think you get a better hookup with it. Now, with that being said, there are situations, if I was out in the opening, yeah, I would throw it on braid or I would throw it on fluorocarbon, but you know, target fish and cypress trees, mono's real forgiving. I like big mono, at least 20. If we were around an area that had a lot of five pounders, I'd throw 25 because I don't want to get broke off. But I like that soft line. 
I like that accurate casting, and that just mono does the best for me. Well, I got uh, I got Kyle throwing his buzz bait, and uh, I picked up a frog. I've just noticed a lot of those fish are getting that spinner bait. I'm almost dragging that bait over their head before they get it. I see the, you know, I'm actually seeing the fish. It's like they're floating, like this evening they've start, you know, they've come up. So I just, uh, just because you know, I mean, it's so hot and uh, it just seems like good conditions. And the other thing that's changed, you know, is oh, as the sun gets lower, you know, it's just getting dark. It's almost like. It's not that late, but it's like late afternoon, you know, in these, up in these trees, so. And they act like they want to be up high. Let's just see how high they'll get. Oh, little frog action around in cypress trees. I just had a feeling that that was, uh, that that might be going on. I mean, just came out there and just, because the deal is these fish are only about that deep. And I've been pulling that spinnerbait right over them, so I got that popping perch out. Little black one, want to make sure they can see it. And just rolled it around. Because it kind of has that pop and walk the dog. I mean, it's basically a, a hopped up walk in the dog topwater lure, fished on braid, that you can pull them out and get with. Nice basin bass. The cypress tree, the Christmas tree of the south. Hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Join us here next time on Sportsman TV.